Good early morning, everybody. This is Dow of the Day. I just recognized that nobody else is on the app. So we're going to keep it quiet. We're going to keep it easy. We're going to read some Dow. We're going to have a nice morning this morning. I'm here this easy, this early. It's easy. But I'm here early because, well, a friend in need and all, you know. I'm going to head out to Indiana this morning and I'm going to help a friend of mine who is currently struggling with a little back pain. I'm going to help him do some things around the house. And, you know, it's always nice to spend some time. Just, oh, someone came up and went away. So if anybody wants to come up, come on up. I uh, basically, Dow of the Day, if you're not familiar, is very simple. Uh, I ask you to pick a number between 1 and 81. That's it. And then we read a section of the Tao. We read a chapter of the Tao Te Ching. Uh, there's 81 chapters in the Tao Te Ching. It's an ancient text. It's kind of like pulling a tarot card, kind of like helping you get a little guidance in things that are going on in your life. It's not really like pulling a tarot card at all, but the Tao Te Ching is uh, the canon of reason. It is the collection of texts that helps you live a reasonable life. So if you want to join me, definitely come up and all I ask is that you pick a number between 1 and 81. My name is Martin John. I host the Recover Yourself podcast. I also host workshops which are going digital and if you uh, appreciate what I have to offer, I also have a monthly subscription where you and I can get on a call every month and talk about how you can live a more reasonable life or how I put it, how you can recover yourself. We all live under the influence of things around us. We're born and we live under the influence of our parents and our teachers and the economic system and the education system. And all of these things get us under their influence. They want us under their influence so we're easier to control. But we're not easy to control, are we? We are powerhouses. And because we're powerhouses, we want to be able to recover that. We want to be able to recover that in all of its glory. And when we can do that, we can be who we are. and We can be in accordance with the Tao. And the Tao is all that is, the ultimate void. It is the space cells. It is the space around you. It is the space beyond the universe. It is the void. So if you have a number between 1 and 81 you want to select and you want to read through, join me. Come on up. We'll talk about the Tao Te Ching. I'm going to go ahead and pick a number today. Um, I often do. I got to find the right pen. There is a. I'm using a rocket book, and so I got to use these special pens if I want to be able to write in them again. Um, here it is. I will start with 32. You know what? No, let's go to the edge. Let's go to the go closer to the edge. I'm going to go with. Six, six, 69. It's interesting. Usually I put me in my notes, but today I put Martin. Who's Martin? I'm Martin. Okay, 69. The generals had a saying, rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. Rather than advance an inch, it's better to retreat a yard. This is called going forward without advancing pushing back without using weapons. There is no greater misfortune than to under underestimate your enemy. Underestimating your enemy means thinking he is evil. Thus, you destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. Okay, well, because we don't have anybody in line right now, what I'm going to do is, oop, interesting. I thought maybe there would be a note here. I'm going to see if there's a note on 69. No, the three great treasures is what I want to uh, recognize. So, the generals have a saying, rather than advance, rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. Rather than advance an inch, it's better to retreat a yard. This is called 
going forward without advancing, pushing back without using weapons. There is no greater misfortune than to underestimate your enemy. Underestimating your enemy means that you think means thinking of that he thinking that he is evil. Thus you destroy your three great your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. So one of the interesting things about the three treasures is um, is I'm looking at the I'm looking at 68 right the one before it sorry about me stumbling over this the best athlete wants his opponent in his best all the all All of them embody the virtue of non-competition. They play. See, here's the thing. Like in 67, two verses before 69, we have I have three things to teach. Simplicity, patience, and compassion. That, I, I, I did think that it was referenced. Um, they don't reference those as the three treasures, but it's intriguing to me that there are these three things um, that he is teaching, right? So sometimes I, I like to kind of just explore what are the three treasures that he's talking about. And you become an enemy yourself. I mean, if you're not simple in your interactions and patient with others and compassionate with others, well, those could be the three treasures that he's talking about. The simplicity in your life, the patience in your life, and the compassion in your life. And if you lose those three, I can very well see that you become an enemy. Nobody wants to be an enemy. You know, but everyone's, you know, oftentimes people are pretty quick to call somebody an enemy or, or to have an enemy. You know, I, there's a phrase, pardon me, it is early still. Um, to have an enemy is to be an enemy. And that's something that I, that I, that I hold dear to, meaning that I don't ever want to have an enemy because I don't ever want to be an enemy. So I try to try to take that um, and, and hold it in my heart as close as I can. So when these when two when two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. That's an important thing. Right? It's important to know how to yield. If you're in a if you're in a disagreement with your loved ones, if you are hurting inside, it is often the best thing to do is to yield the floor to them and just say, I'm not trying to say you're wrong. You know, um, we can have this, both of us, you know, and, and to, and to be the one that yields and to be the one that holds space. So we're going to go through this line by line. And, and, and I see this in Know, in a in, in an interaction I had yesterday, I see the I see the message here in an interaction I had with uh, with Andy, who's also here on on uh, wisdom, um, in an interaction that we had yesterday. So the generals have a saying: rather than make the first move, it is better to wait and see. You know, like sometimes it's best just to. You know, to make the first move is interesting. Sometimes, sometimes things come up and it's not a first move. Sometimes things come up and it creates a space for the first move to be made. But when things come up and it creates a space for the first move to be made, the first move often happens without thinking about it. The first move often happens as a reaction you know, we become reactionary. And if we're reactionary, if we're reactionary in the moment, then the first move gets made, 
without us actually contemplating it. It just gets made because that's what happened. That's what our subconscious coaxed us into doing because we were triggered or because we were angry or whatever. That's triggered. Triggered takes care of all of it because we were excited in some way. We said something or did something that put us in a space of being under the influence of that trigger. And, and once that first move is made, it's very hard to stop fighting. You know, if Putin were to have, you know, advanced troops into Ukraine and then said, oh shit, the next day, what a stupid idea. Man, what the hell am I doing? I didn't want to do that. Let's pull that shit back. Right? He would then have to face the consequences of that first move. Now, if he were to have corrected, he would have had to go into, you know, courts and other things because that's as far as it went. No one had anything more that they could fight him on or anything. And so and so that would have caused you know, a big strife. Now he made the first move. And even if he would have were to have drawn that first move back, everybody else would have come in and made the next move. And then he would have had to have responded to that. You know, I often tell people, if you're going to turn the other cheek, you better be willing to do it three times. Now it's not, it's not that three times is the magic number, but if you're going to turn the other cheek, you better be willing to do it more than once because no one's going to believe you if you only do it once. And so here, rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. Once you make that first move, you want to correct yourself as quick as possible. But if you cannot make that first move, you will be in a better position. You'll be in a much better position to deal with whatever um, is going to come. And in order for you to not make that first move you have to stay in you have to stay in control you have to you have to know when you're feeling triggered rather than advance an inch it's better to retreat a yard and 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 i feel that i feel that it's it's always better to yield it's always better to just especially in conflict in any sort of conflict it's better to just take a breath and re-establish yourself because if you're triggered you are not going to be in a position where you can actually uh, deal with the situation at hand you can't so generals have a saying rather than and remember this is these are generals saying this so these are like people who deal with conflict on a general basis like you don't most of your life i mean i hope isn't filled with so much conflict that you need to, you know, have sayings in your life that are about conflict. But the generals have a saying, rather than it make the first move, it's better to wait and see. Rather than advance an inch, it's better to retreat a yard. It's better to wait and see. It's better to retreat. As soon as you feel off, as soon as you feel triggered, as soon as you feel angry, you are not thinking clearly. You're currently under the influence of some other source, and the best thing for you to do is wait and see. Maybe you need to look inside yourself and reevaluate. Maybe you need to retreat. Either way, try not to advance the argument. Get into a place where you can be calm. This is called going forward without advancing and going back without use and pushing back without using weapons. Imagine if all of your interactions were like this. You'd be able to go forward without advancing. You'd be able to push back without using weapons. Others can advance on you and you can just allow that. You can allow yourself the space. Give yourself the grace to allow them to be who they are, to allow them to be angry, allow them 
to be upset. They're beautiful, loving human beings that are currently upset. Maybe you're upset. And if you're upset, well, that's okay too. But are you going to get carried away with your upsetness? Are you going to advance? And are you going to not, are you going to not want to retreat? Because it is rather than advance an inch, it's better to retreat a yard. It's okay to retreat. Sometimes that's the best move that we can make in war or conflict of any kind. Like I said, it's always, you know, this is the sort of thing that, that, uh, that idea of, you know, turning the other cheek is great. You know, the idea of turning the other cheek is something that we want to be able to do. And when we can do that, we better be ready to do it again and again. Because if we turn the other cheek once and the other person continues to attack and then they realize they've done something wrong and they put out that olive branch and you get upset that they continue to attack and you reject the olive branch, well, now you're back in the same problem. You tried. They didn't accept it. So you resisted their attempt to balance the scales well now you're just you, you you didn't actually turn the other cheek you just perpetuated the problem especially if you know like they're trying to turn the other cheek and then you reject it and then you try to turn the other cheek and they reject it because you're all reactionary don't react to what's going on Figure out what you personally endorse. This is what I talk about in my Recover Yourself workshop. What do you personally endorse in your life? Do you personally endorse being a dick to somebody? Do you personally endorse being, like if you weren't upset, right? So somebody says something to you and then you, you know, like here you are, you're triggered. Now, if you're triggered and you know it, well, you have to get out of that. Well, you don't have to, I suppose. You can get out of that. But the point is that you recognize that you're triggered and then you're able to, to reevaluate. Underestimating See, there is, there is no greater misfortune than underestimating your enemy. And this isn't even your enemy. It's the person that you're in conflict with at this moment. They don't, they don't have to be your enemy. They could be someone that you love. That is just the person that you are in conflict with right now. Underestimating your enemy means that you think he is evil. Think about that. Think about how many times you have just chalk someone up into being evil because you are at odds with them in this moment and just dismiss them underestimating your enemy means thinking he is evil thus you destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself earlier if you were with me i examined number 67 for what is the three treasures and why did i examine 67 is because it's the first verse going back. So I read 68 and then I read 67. That references three things. The three things are the things that the Tao has to teach, or the thing that Lao Tzu has to teach, which is simplicity, patience, and compassion. Could those be the three treasures that we're referencing here? Patience, compassion, uh, and simplicity. Simplicity, patience, and compassion. If those are our three treasures, if, if, if we were to contemplate that, and not that the Tao should be contemplated, but if we were to contemplate that, if, do we lose simplicity, patience, and compassion when we think someone's evil? I would say yes. I would say that it's those could be the three treasures that are being referenced here. 
Thus, you destroy your three treasures, and the three treasures are possibly the the three lessons that the Tao have has to teach. I can imagine that the the Tao would be self referential. So those could very well be the three treasures that are being referenced here. Sure. How are you? Why if we charge you? Pardon? Why if we charge you? What's that? Huh. Sarah? Yes? What's, uh... He, hello, how are you? Who's your today? A book? A book? This is the Tao this is hmm. of the day where we read the Tao Te Ching. Okay. Uh, Sarah joined me, but uh, jumped down. Um, okay. So... Thus you destroy your three treasures. And if the three treasures are being referenced uh, from the Tao, then it could be simplicity, compassion, and patience. And you become an enemy yourself. So you don't want to destroy those three lessons. The three lessons that the Tao has to offer is compassion, simplicity, and patience. And I believe that, and, and that makes sense for me this morning here in number 69. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. You are a great force. The earth is a great force. The Tao is a great force. Your neighbor is a great force. A cat is a great force. I am a great force. You are a great force. Again. And so if I am going to be in the world, I'm going to have to yield to the great forces of nature. I'm going to have to yield to the weather, another great force. I'm going to have to yield to nature. I'm going to have to yield to animals. And people in situations yielding to those things advancing an inch it's better to uh, it's better to retreat a yard than it is to advance an inch so we retreat from those things that force going forward without advancing pushing back without using weapons. This is how we sit here. This is how we this is how we can get through difficult times. This is how we can overcome moments of frustration by remembering to yield. When two great forces, and remember, a great force is anybody, anything, everybody, everything is a great force. The victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. And it's not victory right, at that point. Because victory is about winning. Victory is about overcoming. But yielding, that's, this is long game victory. This isn't short game wins. You will be victorious. Yield to this moment. Yield to it all and you will be able to live and life will present itself to you rather than you having to constantly control life in any way i'm grateful for all of you that listen sarah thank you for joining me i'm sorry i couldn't understand you i don't know if it was the noise in the background um but we are reading we are reading the Tao Te Ching for if you are still listening, Sarah. Uh, this is the Tao Te Ching. It's a ancient text written about 600 BCE. Um, and these were the thoughts of truth by Lao Tzu, right? Like, so these are, these are understandings that we will all come to. Lao Tzu just wrote them down. And the more I read them, the more I probably believe that like, you know, 
we probably didn't need some of the chapters, right? Like some of the chapters are repetitive. So, you know, not that I'm trying to improve on the, on the Tao, but the Tao isn't something that was written down. The Tao is something that's inside you. The Tao is something that you have access to. And I'm grateful for Lao Tzu for having written him down, but fuck him. He just observed. And that's the thing. If you can observe, you'll find that all of this is true as well. Thing is, is this is written 600 BCE. So add 600 to, you know, so 2,500, 2,600 years ago. This guy sat down and wrote this. And you know, if I didn't have the Tao, if I didn't have, have this text, I believe I would come up with the same sort of understanding because it's all true. It's not, it's not false. It's not wrong. It's not something that you need to learn. It's something that you know. Everything here in the Tao is known to you already. Now, if you could step away from your mind a bit, you'll see it's true. Thank you so much for joining me today on Tao of the Day. I'm Martin John. I'm grateful for your, your presence here on this planet. I'm grateful for your presence here on this app. You know, when I, when I put these out, it doesn't matter if anybody's here to me. You know, I, I one time had someone come up and say, like, oh, it says 14 people are here. Is for, are 14 people actually here? And, my my message is always well, I don't care if 14 people are here I care that you're here and when he goes away I care that I'm here and that's the point I care that I'm here having this experience now and it doesn't matter if you are because as I put this into the ether as I sit here with my Tao I get to be me I get to be who I was born to be, who I was created to be, and who I am. Because I've been able to recover myself from living under the influence of all sorts of things. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this platform. I'm grateful for the Tao. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And until next time, keep... Oh, buddy. Joshua, just coming in under the line, son. <laughs> hey, what's up, Martin John? How are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you were about to leave, huh? I was, I was. Well, I mean, because no one was here. But let's 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 dive in. How have you been? <laughs> uh, um, you know, good, and all the. I feel you know ev everybody's going through stuff. I imagine um, the we, we we live in a turbulent we live in a turbulent time, um, or so that's the understanding. But like so, this so the Tao is this uh, the unchanging, ever present, right? And so it's fun to it's, it's really nice to listen to to your wisdom and and um, experiencing you sharing your gifts and um, this. Uh, what you were talking about with uh, yielding, I thought was really, mm. it's always nice. It's always really, <laughs> it's not, it's always like um, juicy to be in the presence of a spiritual transmission. Um, and this context of like yielding versus pushing and like um, what's really present for me lately is, um, or at least this morning, um, that you know most people live their lives in quiet desperation and um kind of beaten down by the social um <laughs> by the rules and regulations of the money system and um not feeling like there's enough or this or that is that is that does that match oh well i mean you know if it, you know, so in that verse, like we were talking a lot about uh, the enemy, 
is enemy. the economic system your enemy? Right. You know, well, like, and if you yeah. if you recognize that, if you recognize that anything can be your enemy, you know, yeah. like then then you recognize that you know, like here what what it's talking about is the yielding, right? Yeah. Where, what what your you know what you're referencing the idea that people are are uh, in discord with the economic system is because they are not yielding to the economic right. system. They are pushing against the economic system. Right. And so like getting out of that and getting into alignment with, um, I was really a great quote that I heard this morning. Um, this, uh, it's by Charles Bukowski. It's this idea The quote is find what you love and let it kill you. Yeah. And there's, um, there's some yielding to letting what you love kill you. And, um, so I was just kind of like thinking, thinking heavily about that quote in context to this idea of yielding. Um, and I uh, figured I'd jump up and let you down me for the day. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that was, that was 69. And that's a, that's a, a, you know, like there's something, there's a lot to be said about yielding and Charles Bukowski, um, you know, he was, you know, like there, we are all in the Tao, right? And what he references there, I mean, is, is, is a beautiful sort of way. I mean, he, he had a tortured life. Um, I don't know how much you know about Charles Bukowski, but, um, not a ton. Yeah. Not a ton. Okay. Yeah. I was, I, you know, like I, I was a big fan of his many years ago. Um, <laughs> so Charles is a, you know, like he references that in, in accordance with his addictions. So he was an alcoholic and, and that's, you know, and he was very cute in, in, in so much of what he did. And I love, I love him as an author. And mm -hmm. when he says like, find what you love and his was, you know, alcohol and women. And he mm -hmm. was like, and just embrace that and let it kill you. And, and that ultimate, ultimately was, you know, uh, his demise. But, um, but I think when we can, like the thing is, is like Charles like really hated himself, you know, and so mm -hmm. he, he, like his alcohol and his 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 addictions to sex and and you know women and alcohol were definitely about escape. But then when we can find that love within ourselves and move that that spiral forward, when we can move that energy forward to where we are today well what what is it that you love you know and when we find Tao within ourselves we can find that it is us that we love and then we live our life right it is our life that we love you know and and that that in loving life in loving this moment without wanting it to be different right in yielding to this moment you know, like mm -hmm. what Charles Bukowski said is true, but where it came from was a place of, of stinging. You know, Charles Bukowski loved to sting and yeah. stung really well. Right. Yeah. And the shock value is kind of what made his words more meaningful and more potent. Yeah. I don't know that he would ever, he would ever agree that he was trying to be shocking. He was being honest. Right. You know, he was like, if we, if it, like he believed that and, and it was true. And the thing was, is he was just speaking truth. And, you know, you know, Pablo Picasso talks about the idea that artists, you know, hold a mirror up to the world, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's what Charles Bukowski did. And he did it in such a way that was, you know, brutal. And he was around during the brutalist era. So like his, you know, his words, while while we had brutalist architecture and things like that going up, like he had brutal words, mm -hmm. which is its own kind of architecture. Yeah, right? absolutely. And that builds and that, you know, because the words that we use, and he was using brutalist words to expose words that were trying to lie mm. to us, mm. which is which was the world, you know, of the the seventies and the eighties trying to build business out of trying to build commerce out of everything that was beautiful. Mm. You know, as we continue to move down the road of, 
of logic as logic started to take over more and more and as business started to take over as the economic system started to create the consumer world that we currently live in he saw mm -hmm. that he was well aware of that and because consciousness hadn't woken up to that he had to use alcohol and addiction in order to be able to access that information and that's what allowed like so he yielded so to that, everything right he yielded to, he yielded well yeah mm -hmm. he escaped he 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 was able to yield through escape you know he wasn't mm -hmm. a buddhist monk but he utilized substance to be able to get there does that justify it does that justify what the the substance abuse and the, the well, killing well, of oneself. why would one have to why would one have to justify killing oneself it's your life you do what you want yeah yeah. There's nothing there's nothing to justify there. I mean the 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 question is that justifiable has to be like turned into the questioner. The why is that question valid? In a world of free will and um whatever you choose is automatic you know at the spirit level whatever you whatever you choose is automatically justified because that's what you chose right um so i see that i see that like fundamental point yeah and there's nothing wrong with being with abusing substance okay tell me more about that because well tell me that's... what's wrong with abusing substance <laughs> uh the world tells you it's the worst thing in the world you could do. Tell me what's wrong with being substance. Not don't tell me what someone else told you. What's wrong with it? Like the world tells it to you. Great. Is mm -hmm. there any reason the world tells it to you? Uh, Is there any actual reason other than that's what that's what the economic world wants of you? It's weird because that's what the world that and who's the theme. world? Is the world the Tao or is the world just some people that have forgotten um, the Tao? Yeah, people in society. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, what, what, what do they know? <laughs> yeah, ever, ever. Exactly. There's nothing wrong um, with, me, with abusing substance. Like, they, they're fine with us abusing coffee. They're fine right. with us abusing sugar. They're fine with us abusing our cell phones. They're fine with us abusing social media. Right. So I don't understand, like, just because like you or society decides alcohol is something that they don't want you to abuse or they want you to abuse only to a certain extent. Right. Or if that crack is something that they don't want you to abuse. Well, what's the difference between crack and sugar? Really not much. Yeah, not much at all with those two. Um, I think the point where it gets hairy, at least for me, is that um, that quiet desperation idea, because um, without, you know, it's not necessarily a recipe for like living a fuller life, right? having more, it's not like necessarily a recipe for more freedom. Okay. Well, if that's a, if that's a, if that's a problem for you, then there's one place that you can solve that problem with me. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not like, like, like so many people want to look out at the world and fix it. Well, the world's not broken. Right. You are. Right. So what is the, what's the Tao of the day for that? What's the recipe? What's the recipe for that? <laughs> Well, I mean, if we yeah. if we if we continue to look at sixty nine, the recipe is yielding, mm -hmm. right? The recipe is like, well, how can you allow quiet desperation? How can mm. you, instead of pushing up against it, how can you allow it to be in your life? How can you allow quiet allow quiet desperation to be a teacher to you rather than an enemy of yours? Because mm. here we say the general say, rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. And I was talking earlier, I don't know if you were here while I was saying this, but sometimes the first move gets made without you thinking about it. You know, you feel threatened. And as soon as you feel threatened, you move. 
but your feeling threatened doesn't mean that a move was made. Or you even just that a move feel was necessary. What's that? Or even that a move was necessary. Right, right. So yeah. you feel threatened and you make the first move. So rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. Like if you wait and see, maybe you'll see that it's not necessary to make a first move. Mm -hmm. Rather than advance an inch, it's better to retreat a yard. It's so much better to be able to like, whoa, 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 let me let me take a step back and see what the fuck's going on here before I start advancing. Yeah. This is called going forward without advancing, pushing back without using weapons. There's no greater misfortune than underestimating your enemy. Your enemy under these circumstances is quiet. How did you put it? Uh, quiet desperation, I think. Yeah, is quiet desperation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. right now, like, if we were to look at a quiet desperation is your enemy, maybe the economic system is your enemy as you as you further expressed it. Mm -hmm. Underestimating your enemy means thinking of him as evil. Now, you may think that the economic system is evil. Now, once you think something is evil, you destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. The three treasures I kind of traced back to chapter um, 67, which uh, you know, reference was just two chapters before the 69, which says, I have three things to teach, simplicity, patience, and compassion. And I say, hmm, is, mm -hmm. is it possible that those are the three treasures that he's talking about? Simplicity, patience, and compassion. Now, I, are, 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 we, are we making, are we, are we not being compassionate towards those those and the economic system, those who are in agreement with and those who are aligned with the economic system. Are we not, are we, are we making it more complex than it needs to be? Are we, are, are, have we destroyed, have we destroyed our ability to be patient in our, in our life right now? Because we've made ourselves an enemy to the economic system. Hmm. When two great forces oppose each other, you're a great force, the economic system is a great force, the victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. Play the long game. Play the long game. Mm -hmm. The economic system will yield you your anger and will not change itself. You, on the other hand, well, if you don't yield to the economic system, you will be changing your whole life. So there's a, I'm looking for a recipe. So it's the yielding, it's that, it's that com simplicity, compassion, and patience. Patience. Thanks, Martin, John. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I'll talk about that a little bit more. It's this, you know, like you're looking for a recipe that in and of itself means that you want a, a plan to, to, to attack, right? You want a plan to attack this in your system even. I mean, just think about it like, do you want the economic system to be your enemy? Do you want to be an enemy of the economic system? Who's going to win that? Mm. You know, in the first line, it says it's rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. My guess is you've already made some first moves. Now it might be time to wait and see. I don't know what that means for you personally, but it's a beautiful thing to contemplate. It's a beautiful thing to just sort of be with yourself and observe. How does this work? And instead of looking at everybody, which is so much what we like to do sometimes, we look out at the world and we say, you know, everybody is in quiet or in quiet desperation because of the economic system. Well, they might not have to be. Maybe they are because they're at odds with the economic system. I appreciate you coming up, Joshua. I know you didn't get to pick a number, but I'm going to chalk you up as 69. I appreciate it. 69 is a good one. We don't get to talk about it much. Um, I appreciate you coming up. I appreciate you guys listening. 
I'm going to step away because as I mentioned earlier, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And I'm going to be handing, I'm going to be driving out to Indiana and helping my buddy set up his studio. And uh, we're going to, we're going to have some lunch today. It's going to be a good day. I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful day. I hope you're productive and I hope you make friends with the economic system today because, you know, it's a great force. And if you can yield to a great force, you'll have victory. It's the long game. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Keep recovering yourself every day. There's just more to recover. Don't, don't be an enemy, and you won't have one. Love you guys, and until next time, keep recovering yourself.